Welcome back, everybody, here for our second Vegas game of the best of three. I'm Toby One, your host for the English live stream for the ESL One Frankfurt 2016 European Qualifier Quarterfinal Number Three, <laughs> with Team Empire going up against Vega. Team I'm joined by Swindles. By Swindles, He's, he is persevering through sickness to bring you the information <laughs> inside that mucus-filled head of his. Oh, it's much yeah, appreciated, man. bro. Yep. I, I expect a raise after this cast, if you don't mind. I'm gonna need my overtime fee. <laughs> overtime? No, yeah. you, just, you just get sick leave. I'll give you like the next week off. What? But I thought we got like a hundred dollars a game. Yeah, yeah, because esports is made of money. Alright, I'm making a Reddit post. I was, I was lied to. <laughs> the rage. Um, just the rage, that's it. That's it. We're just gonna leave. Your cast full time for BTS now. I joined Dota, obviously. Death to us all. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> let's, uh, let's let's talk about play. the game, man. <laughs> All right. Um, Invoker wasn't first picked, which is interesting. It was actually um, Beastmaster. So Vega's probably gonna second pick Invoker if it gets through. I don't see any situation where they wouldn't. Um, I think it's one of probably Mag's best heroes, and as you can see, it's just really nice to have that vision advantage against aggressive teams Five like Empire. Well, Empire go back in for this Enchantress pick up first off. I wonder if this time around we see something a little bit more normal. I think is the best way to ask about it uh, for Team Empire. Actually throw that Enchantress into the jungle, have it rotating around. We get a Faceless Void offlane, so this will actually fly to us. We're looking at a Void offlane and Enchant an Enchantress uh, inside the jungle. Even if there was... Oh, who was that team? There's one team that keeps playing Faceless Void safe lane. Uh, it's possible. They actually go, wow, that's so interesting. They go Zeus again. I, I guess they just really like that Zeus against the Enchantress. I really, really expected them to pick Invoker, but Void also very good against Invoker for obvious reasons. Um, will it be a carry Void? I'm not sure. They've done that before, but I just think it's so much better as an offlaner nowadays. Like, the hero is meant to be played defensively as a teamfight disruptor, more so than just a hard carry. I'm, I'm a little surprised that uh, Vega actually banned the puck. Uh, not that I'm saying that Team Empire don't actually have a great puck player, it's the fact that normally when I see a face Void being picked up, I'm looking at a mid lane to have some kind of nuke potential. We're just capable of like inflicting damage inside the Void Chrono, or the or safe lane the safe... to have a lot of damage which can also be inflicted inside the Chrono. Yes, you've got the Enchantress in Pettis, but you kind of want something else to work with. Five seconds remaining. And the, and the puck isn't... Like he's another, he's another good team fight controller. Oh. They really, um, it's weird actually, because Empire actually picked Puck and Void together like three times over the past couple of days, and I, I don't really like those heroes in conjunction because, as you said, they're both those team fight disruptor types. Their raw mm -hmm. damage output is not that high, um, and I just. I don't know, I'm just not a huge fan. So I, Clinks, I like the band. Clinks is really good against Zeus and in conjunction with Void. Um, but both teams can kind of have really open drafts. Um, Empire's run, Enchantress Void, uh, actually twice recently. They paired it with um, Disruptor and Death Prophet one game, which I think would be solid here. I kind of like DP, and I think it works better for the type of style Vega's playing against them. Would, would DP be strong enough to stand up against Zeus? Uh, yeah, DP destroys Zeus one versus one. Team Empire's turn to I, I can understand that like, when you're getting close, <laughs> and obviously then the Zeus is kind of screwed. If the Zeus can keep some range and have like a nice rotation, like one hero to help him out in the mid. Sky Wrath Mage. Interesting. I like. Yeah, it's actually quite good against Void. There's the Invoker, so I actually like Empire's draft more here. I think it's got more raw synergy, and their last pick is gonna obviously just be a support. The Sky Zeus Beastmaster combo, like again, their damage output is really high. One thing I feel like Empire might be missing here is just a cleanse. Right now, a target that gets roared will get Skywrath silenced, ulted, Zeus ulted, he'll just die. And yep. if they just had some sort of cleanse or ability to prevent that, then they'd be in a much better situation. And I love the Spectre pick, so. The bottom lane, Void's gonna have a lot of trouble, and just 
Vega is once again in a situation where they just can kind of relax, go for pickoffs, abuse globals, and then at a certain point, they're just going to win the game. Uh, Spectre, in my opinion, is one of the best heroes against Invoker, as a lot of people who play pubs will tell you, because he just uses his ult, finds you, and then just targets you, and the game is really grim. And they actually banned Jug on Empire as well, which is probably the go-to counter to a Spectre. Um, I mean, they have all their cores anyway, but, you know. Mm -hmm. Crystal Maiden was the final ban out by Team Empire. So worried about the counter to the Enchantress. And they actually, they Team actually banned Witch Doctor Empire. themselves. Maybe they're worried also Wait, about, like, what support <laughs> synergy works with the Faces Void apart from just the Enchantress. <laughs> But who else would you want to run on Vega? Like, you, you can't eat a stunner. Maybe a saving grace up against the face's void, something along the lines of a vengeful spirit. Can you get a lo can you get away with that with VS? A Vega for their second support? Vega would have actually been really nice as well. Uh yeah, I like Lion's fine, I agree. Wyvern might have actually been better, but they just have so much magic damage and it, it, he he would just have to it'd pretty much be an alt hero. And that would be it. I like the lie just to give them some control. They need to be able to. They just need more. They needed more damage control. They needed a bunch of everything. So lion's about the greediest support you can get. So I'm fine with that. Uh, Vega. Remaining. What are they gonna pick? Um, so I was thinking like VS would be an option time. for them. Like something to save <laughs> someone from their faces void ultimate. Reserve time. Um, I'd be okay with that. Uh, I think. Just because it's Vega, I think that a Disruptor might be more likely. I, I really like Disruptor with Spectre. Like, whenever you have all of these other heroes that provide vision, I think Disruptor becomes really, really good. Um, they might not want it here. Uh, maybe they go with, like, a, a Night Stalker type hero. Just, again, to re make their game plan around vision control, map control. Uh, delaying the game. I'd like Venge, but yeah, dude, they're gonna go do I, I want them to pick something that can go off lane with the Beastmaster because Lion Gyro is like relatively strong, but not amazing. And if you leave just a Beastmaster there, he really won't have a good time at all. So Solo will just counter rub on Mapashka and probably help out the Beastmaster, ensure he gets a good game. And I expect Vega's lanes to go pretty well with that pick. And I, I do agree with it. They just needed something to secure the, that very early phase of the game when they don't really have an answer to the Enchantress. Yeah. Everything looks pretty good, man. Uh, just before we go into it, I, I want to ask you this question because I'm hearing some tinkering in the background. Are your boys having breakfast? Over yes, in America? they are. She Chef Josh made oatmeal. <laughs> he, really? I can mute in between like, he, talks. Uh, it's, it's, it's okay, but really, oatmeal is his choice? The yeah. chef makes oatmeal? It's pretty healthy, man. You put a bunch of uh, apples and other fruits in there. And uh, you eat it so, with, um... Okay. Yeah. I, I, I had, the, I had this good. image of you just, like, having this raw porridge every single morning as, like, <laughs> training food. <laughs> like, uh, I'm, we'll ass see. I'm assuming you actually had, uh, Victor. Uh, uh, the Serbian, the big Serbian guy. Known as Bucktop. Uh, 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 to other people, he just reads his name Rolly. Uh, Rolly. He, he was running around in, uh, Croatia, saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start up a, up, uh, a training camp. A fitness training camp. I'm going to be a personal trainer. People could hire me for like a month during their boot camps. And uh, you'll come in and like do everything from diet to fitness to exercise. Get everyone in, in peak physical condition for the next, uh, for the next land event. Oh, that's a good idea. I mean, I don't know. I think the kids aren't. It's pretty easy. You just got to drink a lot of water. I mean, we normally eat like tons of eggs for breakfast. But I swear, man, eggs just start to not be tasty after a while. But, I don't know. I think it's more about not eating unhealthy than it is eating healthy for the most part. There's, I hear there's you know. a lot of foods. Like, the worst, man, like, I'm telling you, you really want to make an impact, like, you free advice, you just cut out the soda and, like, all the sugary drinks. If you look at the amount of carbs and sugars in that, it'll literally just beat a candy bar most of the time. So you know that eating, like, a few Reese's is bad. Well, the, the large Coke... Is is not good. It is probably worse. Capas uh, Cap told me like the best thing he actually did was uh, start drinking the flavored water because mm. there's still there's sugar, sugar in it, sugar but in you it? actually get yeah. enough of a taste that you don't just feel like you're drinking yeah. plain water all yeah. the time. Yep. So we you, use like you, Mio's you and, like, taste buds. Yep. Use like, like 
sweeteners and shit, which it still isn't like amazing for you, but it's better than nothing. And then if yeah. you're gonna drink, like, I mean, it's a shame because beer is just so delicious, but it's just so bad for you. And the best is just, you know, like cranberry vodka or even better, like the tonic in vodka. And that's just, it's just not pleasurable, you know? So it's kind of finding that, that middle ground where you're not making your body die faster, but you're also not eating kale every day. It's all about moderation, you know? Why yeah. are we talking about, I guess it's pause, so this is okay. Yeah. Puppies yeah. and so, fitness you, you are swindle, appropriate swindle. conversations. I know you, you're really, at, you, you seem to be really bad about, like, I don't like doing filler kind of stuff. But I can tell you, even, like, even like a Chinese major, Chinese major. <laughs> there was a lot of downtime. <laughs> Cinder and I, on, 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 like, the secondary stream, we spent 30 minutes talking about, like, different types of soup you can make out of creeps. This is just something <laughs> you've got to accept as a caster. All right, I'll I'll improve it. I gotta start. Um, I don't know. There's, I don't even want to talk about current events in the world right now. As an American, you want to stay very far away from those sorts of discussions. So <laughs> I'm like limited in my topics at the moment. But oh, luckily the just... game has gone underway. So many things, so many things which we will avoid. Just like Skyrim Mage, you're looking very blue today, which is his normal color. Wait, no, he's not. Uh. <laughs> oh, free roll. Free roll. So Vega, let's check out their lanes. They run mag off lane. No surprise with the Beastmaster. I'll uh, throw no one into the mid lane as the Zeus with the bottle. Solo and Seema are going to be the two supports. With the boots first, Solo, so no straight Iron Talon for this Doombringer. And that puts FN into the safe lane as the Spectre. Man, they are, they are getting up in the face of this Enchantress. She's still got a sentry ward of her own. And they have to keep her off the hillside. Wow, they've actually almost killed her. In fact, they are gonna kill her! <laughs> yeah, um, they... That happened. They mostly just wanted to push her off the camp because with the new spawn boxes, I mean, everyone places wards perfectly. So nearly every camp is now just a coin flip. So if they don't see you place your ward, you can assume that most of the time they'll probably need to use two. Um, and actually, Enchantress still only has that one sentry, so he's got to get lucky now. Are you a fan of the new spawn boxes? Like, there was a, a little bit of talk where things have become a little bit easier for people because the spawn boxes now exist. Um... Yes and no. I mean, as a Dota purist, I can understand why someone would dislike it. I just feel like it... Uh, it's one of those things where everyone should know it, and the information's easily available. It's like the same as... Like, in my opinion, it's like the same argument you'd use to, like, bring a notebook into a booth, you know? If you're gonna make notes... Why not just have the notes with you, in a sense? It's the same uh -huh. sort of thing. So well, instead you, of you, like... you bring a notebook into a booth. Yeah, well, it's sort of the same thing. So instead of forcing every player to go through the tedious learning of every box, or if you go to a LAN event, like literally printing out the boxes and having them with you, which is always possible, they just sort of give it to everybody. And, I mean, yeah, I, I can understand the logic. And Sorry. Doom just ate Sol the big creep, so... Yeah, yeah. Solo has just been the biggest dick in the world. <laughs> Like, yeah, the camp was dewarded. That was nice. One century ward down. Yay, yay. Uh, but just to walk up at the exact last moment as the intent was just there, it's like, yeah. Good luck for that one. Even Lion's having a real hard time up against Mag. Like, he can throw out his stun all he wants, but with the boar slow, Mag can harass him out of this lane. If King and I actually didn't have boots first, this would be a very dead lion. I'm also yep. not quite also certain not... about this uh, courier's run. Run. And it is and the die curry. It seems to be a little bit, be a little like, bit stray. This is really good by Mag. He again goes for the early boots, um, and Doom Ooh. getting Scandal? the information on. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's, it's not going to equate to anything. Still got to remember that's a level three invoker. Invoker. He's uh did start with the wand, which is nice. Doom gonna eat a clarity real quick. Um, and this is sort of the thing, like Beastmaster against these two heroes, he'll get a lot with this boots first build, but the Enchantress is once again the hero that kind of has to make an impact, and as you can see, Solo is just pretty much denying his roam, more so than actually trying to get anything done. Now he might be able to eat another creep. Yep, there it goes. He'll take that. I was gonna time out anyway. And now he's got War Stop instead of Regeneration. But there's a lot of yeah, movement coming out from Team Empire. They're moving uh, they're up. Move? Okay, because they're, they're trying to check the wards of Vega. Vega. 
And Vega right Vega now, they're right one now, ward watching that top rune slash, slash mid lane. lane. And the other and reading the other them server ward, did he? It's, 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 it's on the bottom rune. It's on the bottom rune. Just a little bit further bit north, further however, north, however. Away from away where from most where people would probably look to, to D ward. To D uh, How's that bottom lane looking? Faceless Void's getting some free levels down here. The CS is also yeah, looking pretty damn good for him. Good for him. Mmm. I don't know, I, I just, I feel like this is sort of the same as last game, where this, like, now, there's just a doom here, like, you're not roaming, and, ah, like, this enchantress kind of needs to get something done, because as we saw last game, his hero will fall off pretty hard, this doom will eventually, inevitably, be really impactful in the game, especially because, unlike last game, oh, wow, oh, okay, he's just gonna stun and run, um, but in this game, there's a void, a gyro, invoker, all of these are excellent doom targets, um, specifically the Invoker in the Void before ulti, so, um, I, we'll, we'll see what happens, man, but once again, I just feel like Vega's got the better strategy, and Empire needs to outplay their opponents to win this game. I also love this strategy on the bottom lane. We saw something similar with it from, uh, from another uh, CIS another... team recently, where they ran where a Skyrest Sky Mage as well as Clanks up against up the against Faceless, faceless void. void. Cause normally Void, normally like, your void, issue like, is, you, you try and you do try a whole and bunch of damage, damage to him and then he just time walks and repairs it. But if you do a lot of burst, lot of burst damage, damage, and then you can seal him at the right time, right you can't time, time walk that off. off. So that's where the Skyrest Mage is being picked up more and more up against this off-lane Faceless Void. There also was, there a, also there was, was a, a game a where you game had a lot had of synergy. Of... They're also they're running also a mid Zeus in that game, game as well. Yep. And they're just gonna hit a timing where they'll have Hawks flying around, Beastmaster ready to roar, and then a double global potential. While at the same time, Skyrath and Doom could be their very own hit squad and take out... Probably, they'd be pretty even against any two heroes if they get a Doom off early, so... It's just... One of those situations where you just look at Vegas heroes there, I just feel like it's so much easier for them to make things happen around the map. Mm -hmm. um, the laning stage is pretty even. I think that Empire is probably getting a slightly better exchange, but that's sort of a given as they are running the edge. And I, I just, I mean, he's got a uh, smoke, so I expect him to make a move soon. It's just, it's really got to work out for him. They need to secure one of these lanes as a definite win for their side. Yeah, because right now, the only rotation from the Enchantress has just been off the back of walking directly at people, not a smoke just movement. Smoke Sorry to interrupt, but just to confirm, yep. uh, Empire, Scandal actually wasn't playing in the previous game. They had a ringer, right? Yeah. He's back for this one. Yes, correct. Solo, on the run. This could actually be a, a second kill second with the extra stun. The Centaur from the neutral <laughs> camp was helping out. Yeah. Uh, at least Scandal for a moment, but it's actually a Sunstrike from Scandal to, uh, to get that kill. They really needed that. They really, really, really needed that. Invoker's having a great lane, though. He's uh, he's actually behind in CS, which is surprising, but that kill will help jumpstart his Midas. Uh, Scandal's going to need to play a phenomenal game for them to win this, and he has so much to deal with. Like he, If you look at the Vega heroes, all of them are a problem for him. Oh, wow. Look, oh, jeez. And there you go. The Void oh. just died immediately. Caught a silence, a dagger, Zeus all dead. And there's just nothing he can do. <laughs> well, Steven, look at that one. I was, I was actually busy checking out uh, exactly who was playing in the last game for for, uh, for Team Empire. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, there's yeah. a tornado mid, kind of messing with no one, but uh, he's actually going to go get that regen rune bottom, which is really friendly for an Oom Zeus. That is awesome. Uh, oh, it gets denied by the Forge Spirit. Really good job that that game by Scandal. I don't think their Ringer does that. That's actually super important. Not a lot of people do that, but one of the huge benefits of heroes like NP, Beastmaster, Invoker is that you can always be disciplined and check rooms with your minion. And as you can see there, it pays off in a very big way. Yeah, to answer your question, like, it was the Yellow Warrior who was playing instead for Scandal. Okay. In, ga in game number one. I, was, I just wanted to double check it before I said it. That was wasn't awful. he supporting? Oh yeah, they had Mapushka mid, so that really wasn't even Team Empire, which explains why their draft was, uh, odd. I'll say somewhat weird, yeah. <laughs> I... A little odd. Yes. Odd, odd, odd is the best word for those situations. It's almost like the, it was interesting. <laughs> kind of um, well, this has been pretty passive for the early start. I really was expecting more movement coming out from Mapushka. And uh, now he's going to move to bottom lane, but he's right underneath the Radiant Observer Ward. So this movement of Team Empire is very much telegraphed. 
Notice too, like what Seam is prioritizing. Thunder goes first back off cooldown, and he's got a 40% damage increase on Magical. He actually went to three points up in the Ancient up. Seal. Also stopping the Faceless Boy from getting away. <sighs> it's... I just, uh, you see Enchantress actually rotating over, yeah, so come. before I comment, we'll see what happens. Rotating over. Who do they focus on? Seema actually seals over on the Enchantress. Thunder goes right here. She can't the Enchantress. And then a 66 life. The Skyrim's Mage will drop. And the Spectre actually reality himself up to the Lion. He actually left the bottom lane completely after Ramsey's rotated down. Zeus is still in the neighborhood. So we basically had a little bit of a switcheroo for the moment. Oh, solo? Uh, solo? Oh. I don't know why he walked in there. I think it's really expecting no one to initiate. And now Zeus, trapped inside the Chronosphere, the Sun Strike's gonna hit pretty nicely on no one. And he's not gonna get out of this one either, Team Empire. That's they're getting three kills. Yes, the Enchantress is brought down by the Zeus, but, like, really, the cost is so high. They can turn and fight this one in seven seconds' time, Team Empire, if they yeah. want to. Because they've got the call down available from Ramsey's end, but the, the pressure will not be applied there. Vega will fall back, and Scandal's getting free damage on the mid tier one. The Invoker, oh wow, yeah, dead Skyrath. The Invoker actually had an arcane rune there, so we had two Sun Strikes helped secure both kills. Unfortunately, he didn't get either one, but he's still gonna finish his minus just about now. Well, that was really good for Empire because the Lion got level six top, TP bottom immediately gets a kill, fresh arcanes too, and Scandal will get them in tower as well. So that was really, really good for Empire. They move really far ahead just in, in map control. It's gonna probably be about 2,000 gold, 2,000 XP when the dust settles, and they, they really needed those rotations, although I, I question what in the hell Vega was doing. Um, they lost three heroes, in my opinion, for like no reason, because solo running in would just made no sense. Yeah, that's... Yeah. I was watching it happen, and uh, I, my eyes are almost like in disbelief. And now Team Empire, like... You've got a gyrocopter of 5.1k net worth. You got an invoker at 4k net worth in front of the in front of the spectre, and he just picked up his minus in under 10 minutes. Candle's gonna have himself a great time, and they've actually got the the other big perk of being on dire side with a large amount of summons available for them, aka both the forge spirits, the alacrity buff ups, the enchantress advantage, so they can slip themselves in to take Roshan pretty quickly. They obviously still have to respect the nuke damage that comes from Baker and the chaos that can be caused by the raw and spectral haunt. It's something they have to keep in mind. Indeed. It just makes it so hard to play this kind of game. Afterlife. Because... About to get roared up. They gotta keep that sounds going and uh okay, hello, goodbye. Uh yeah. Uh, I don't I don't like the usage of the Spectre LT, but he does get the assist end. That's a uh pretty okay gold change, but I just feel like Spectre ult's too valuable, even though they're using the Roar and the Zeus ult, you can still score a kill later on with just any disable, the Doom goes off, anything like that. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, is okay for both teams, but like I said, I think Empire are the ones that really have the, they need to make things happen, and it starts with pushing this tower, so they, they need to make this happen. Well, they're attacking into it. Vega, not using their fortification just yet. They don't really have any intention of fighting this, as you can see they're all backing out now. But you may as well fortify just to make Team Empire waste a little bit of time. Meanwhile, they have to focus on a different target. But what target do you even go for? Like, if you're Vega right now, you understand Team Empire has a superior position because you don't have Special Horn up, uh, and you also don't have Beastmaster Roar available. So you just try and farm up the lanes, secure your jungle after you've lost the Tier 1 tower with wards? Like, what's the play here? Uh, we talking- wait, for- For, for Vega? Here? Or Vega, no, for yeah, Vega. sorry. Um, Okay, maybe this is the play. I, Try and contest Roshan with a tornado from Solar. <laughs> I mean, again, if they had Spectre LT, maybe they look to fight this, but it is very difficult to battle into Empire's lineup right now. They have all the necessary levels and cooldowns available. Like, it's it's sort of like a, whenever you have a Void, Enigma, Phoenix, these huge big AoE ulti heroes, Here it's just so hard to run come. in and fight. And what is Roshan's are in the hands of Gyrocopter, a perfect Chronosphere. Doom's gonna pop very, very quickly. I... And Seema's on the run out here. They may have sealed up over on Ramsey's, but he'll let the call down go. No one's TPing out inside the tree line. They do not have a stun to stop him. Call snap I... was already triggered and the line was too far away, so two heroes lost for Vega, 
while Empire will take the easy Roshan and push instantly into the tier 2 tower on bottom. Uh, what's Solo doing, man? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no answer. There's no answer. He's, he's walking into the middle of Team Empire. <laughs> I know he's, uh, he's, got, he's got to get Doom off, but... You just can't, his team's not even close to him, you know what I mean? I, I've, I don't want to criticize him too harshly because he is the captain right now, and I believe he's making the shot calls, and as someone who does that role myself, like, sometimes you can just get distracted, you're looking ahead, you're thinking about the enemies, and you, you just that again. He's a Petrol Horn Solo, yet again, and he's always playing the Citroen role right now as Candle. Ooh, candle. will also be popped by Zeus, and they've got some good damage, especially with FN on the back lines. You got two heroes down, but Ramsey's with that call down. You can say goodbye to Zeus, so there goes your burst damage in Afterlife. In two seconds' time, he's got Time Walk available, jumps himself forward. He needs to get himself a Time Lock, actually doesn't even have that skilled up. So, Seema into the trees. Will definitely end up dying, a wonderful Time Walk forward. Blocks the tree line, and they'll get the the uh, extra kill on the Sky Wrath Mage. I think Vega will take that though. They lose two, but they get Aegis and two. And they're, if you look at even the CS, we're going to get to a situation where it's pretty much Invoker Gyro versus all regarding damage output. But Pushka is, once again, just really under farmed on this inch. And the Void is going for a full, just, you know, he'll go into the Vlad, straight into Blink. He didn't even skill Bash yet, so they. They just need to keep this momentum going, and those towers are really important. I talk about this all the time, but as Dire, you really want to take the Radiant Safe Lane Towers ASAP, because it just, like, you can even see, like, now the map that's open for them. Like, all of this area, they can now control. Um, and specifically in the jungle, like, this is this is now their domain. It also protects Roshan, helps to cover runes. And Empire just need to control the map, make sure they get at least 60-70% of the farm, and take fights when they can get them. Um, because they will lose if this gets into just like a ratting split push style, just due to the sheer amount of global pressure Radiant's that Vega can output. Mid lane, solo set again. His team is a long way away. And here goes 0 for 5 now on this Doombringer. Scandal is actually being assembly... I don't want to say initiated on, but scouted up on the top lane, but his ghost wall just lets him walk away. So they couldn't find the opening there. Yes. And you've all almost you've got your already up, so yeah, there it is. One second, One and second. Uh, now Spectral Horn is available. And this is the time when Vega oh, wants Vega. to fight. They have the power to do so. So they're actually going to double smoke up with Seema and Mag. FN's just hiding in the tree lines just outside of the range of the rest of Team Empire. And you can say goodbye to your Enchantress now. So Smoke, Gank, Roar, and Mystic Flare combo does this work. Radiance and they don't have to burn both of their big ulti combos either. But this Spectre is having a lot of downtime, like there's no farming to be had. Instead, no one's the one claiming it in the bottom lane. So he can get the Veil of Discord up. He's also not going for the Radiance, something I'm not a huge fan of. I think that uh, you gotta just, bad man, just go with the drums, get the Radiance. I think that that's the way they needed to play this. Um, I like what Empire has done though. They've itemized very aggressively. We're gonna have an SNY straight into a BKB. Screw the life steal on Ramses. Scandal's going Midas into drums. I expect him to go either Necrobook, Yules, or Bots next. And they're just going full fight and they are grouping up and attacking straight at the objectives, which is how you need to play against this Vega lineup. Um, they, they will slaughter you if you get caught um, in multiple positions, but team fight wise, Empire definitely has the advantage. Uh, and this, an this is what fight. you're asking for too, right? In Gainable 1, you're there going, okay, well you take Roshan, then you half-heartedly attempt some kind of push in a, at an objective. This time around, like, it seems like Empire, with Scandal back in the lineup, is just looking just like look they actually have purpose on the map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems, I agree with you 100%. It just seems to me that there's a lot more fluidity to their movements, and even when they're acting independently, there's obviously a team dynamic in play. Like, there's a purpose to the the, the macro goals of this team. And <laughs> Scandal's actually going to rush the Ags. I haven't seen many people pull this off successfully, but I actually really like it here, because it'll allow him to just be a real invoker very early on. I expect him to get the next Aegis, and he can just do so much work with all the spells to be able to cast. Um, I personally, like, I have become a big believer in Ice Wall, man. That thing is just so annoying to play against. And if you look at Vegas heroes, nearly all of them, specifically Beastmaster, Spectre, Doom, like, these heroes can get 
get kited so hard by a well played invoker. When he gets more levels, you can start throwing a tornado into the mix. It's gonna get really scary for Vega. Um, he needs to be the doom target, which is why I think he'll get the next stages, and then we'll see Vega, uh, Empire try to high ground. But I found Lion. There. Yep. Very quick kill. The Beast Master Hulk just let them scout out his, his position. Wants uh, after life. Wants to keep chasing. He does not have a lot of life over on life. this face of Void. Swing his Doom like that. The Mystic Flam will ensure the kill. And now Team Empire, after all that wonderful praise we had, you even got the Enchantress walking into the middle of Vega. We were just praising how fluid their movements are and purpose of everything they were doing, but that chase felt very odd. odd. Giving Vega now a huge boost. Skyrath Mage Skyrath actually Mage got just over 600 gold just from being involved in that. The, the trade-up could be a free kill off their fan, but with drums and face boost, it's not going to catch him. Dyer's top tower is under yep. attack. Um, uh, it's Dyer's another free pick-off. They get a tower, which is even more important. This is really big for Vega to just open up the map a little. The timing is just not for some time. They're going to be needing growth 3 on the Beastmaster. Zeus is going to need just mobility items. He went once again for that Veil and Aether Lens build. So he just needs the mobility to actually get his spells off effectively. Scandal is going to finish his Ag soon. Ramses is really farmed. We talked about this kid on Gyrocopter. Definitely the hero he's most comfortable on. Um, but uh, Vega also just got up two really nice deep wards as well. These are so helpful. You'll notice this if you study a lot of the really top teams where they very rarely will ward locations like in this area or this area. Choosing instead as the Radiant side to place like Deep Vision. Gotcha. So that you can actually scout out their movements before the smoke, before they actually make the hidden movements. So a lot of times rune wards won't really give you the info because they'll already be smoked past them. Whereas these deep wards, like they see the void and they know that they are safe around the map, which is why this Beastmaster can just actually run straight up to top and take this wave. And being afraid, with only one hero is showing on the map. Because he knows the void is farming up on the side. Yeah. That's the right vision of the Enchantress bottom. And that one's that one's actually a little bit more of a defensive wall compared to the one you were you were talking about. But I suppose yep. when the tier one tower still up, it still helps. But Empire yes, now so will four man smoke up underneath their own tier tier two tower. There was a wave from the three radiant obs wards. They, that they already look, that's that's a radiant line right there. They know exactly what's coming because they saw the void, and then no one shows middle, no one's bottom, with the exception of this enchantress. And there's no yep. objective there, so they're they're very aware this is happening, and that's sort of like the inferno oh, from that word. They smoke. They're they going go right into, into it. it. Rams going to get himself a really good call, and a willy no. They blink out. Maggot himself cut stuck at the trees for a half a second, and that's yep. a 10 second BKB burn from <laughs> Ramsey. Line will get hit by the veil of discord. The thunder goes around, gets the vision. Special dagger up with the Chronos spear, and now. Solar, really too close hit. Gets hit oh, by I the Chronos Spear. You got Epson on the front lines. The finger of death. Lion's last gift to them. The Doom has already bought back into this fight. Seema is so low. Walking away. Candle, does he actually have Sunstrike available to invoke it? He should have actually seen Seema go into the tree line, but not going to happen. Alright, so three things about that fight. One, Void really needed to itemize for a blink instead of an Ags straight away, in my opinion, and that kind of demonstrates why. They actually just don't have initiation as the Lion with Arcane didn't rush blink. And Solo is just suffering from Kurt, the Captain, where he just continuously is running in. He's dead as well. Having he's his actually, yeah, he's, he's, he's still dead. Like, with Call Snap and the Rocket Barrage, he just he has a dieback as well. He went through two lives without casting Doom. Yeah, Solo is not he's 0 and 7 right now, and he's just he's just doing trying to do too much. Where in this game, it's kind of hard. But like Mag sort of has to be the guy scouting out. And on the last point, you never counter smoke up a high ground ever. That smoke works if they maybe do it like this, but you never ever ever smoke up a high ground. That's like rule number one. Um, but they get burned, and now it's the perfect timing for the Roche spawn. No ulties available on Vega. They might try to contest this, but they're gonna. Uh, Beastmaster Hawk gets pretty quickly yep. sniped off, and Sc Scandal is now an immortal. What do you want to see over on Scandal? Like, is it important for him to have maneuverability to keep up with the with the faces void, like going from like going Link Dagger, or can he get away with BTs into into disable? Uh, sorry, which hero? Uh, in Poker. What will be your item choice progression wise? <sighs> it's hard to say, honestly. I I don't un play that hero as much as my do. In this game, I'd probably say bots just so that because they're ahead enough he's doing enough damage they're in a position where the only way they really lose is if 
they aren't able to close the game in the next 10-15 minutes. So I'd say either an item that allows him to all in, or that allows him to just control the map a little bit better and ensure these lanes are pushed. And they once again find a kill on the Enchantress, and that's just kind of what happens with massive damage output. Mm. Empire will slowly lose their advantage if this style continues. They just need to be able to go for objectives very soon, and I, I'm really afraid they might be waiting for this Ags on Afterlife, and that's just just not a, an item that I think will make enough of an impact on this game. Like it just it's just not oh, good here. This is so sad for Reliant. He's gonna die to Necro books, but he was uh, 20 gold away from having his blink dagger when that gank happened. And it was just these two observer wars that were planted down by Vega. Which allowed them to see his, his perfect positioning. He did one last camp to get his blink dagger. One camp. That was all. Yep. Really unfortunate. And once again, these wards pay off. Uh, Vega is playing with just way more vision than the enemy team. They see both of these TPs coming in. Enchantress, Invoker. They now know they're up there. Afterlife camping. Um, this is actually a Manta finish on FN. Not a huge fan of that item, as I said, but I mean, it's not bad here. I feel like a Radiance at this point would kind of just secure them this game, whereas the Manta delays their timing until at least his defusal, potentially his item after that. I'm, I'm not a, actually, I'm a little bit more forward in this game, especially up against heroes like Lion. Because that's why obviously <laughs> like, it works with the illusions. You can just get into like something like a defusal blade, and that Lion is just going to be dead within the space of maybe one full second. You wouldn't have the same kind of power kind of... against the Enchantress, however, but yeah. It gives you quick burst options once you, once you haunt in. Ramses, say hello to Hawk. Hawk, say hello to Ramses. He just walks up walks to the tier up. two tower and just starts hitting it. Oh, well, this jar doesn't this really is... fear anything. Fear anything. Yep, this is what they need to do. He went back for the life steal. I agree with that. He should be able to accelerate by just stacking his own ancients if they aren't able to high ground immediately. Uh, and they're in a really good position here. Solo's making the right move, and he's split pushing bottom. They they can really just force hard here. Um, what did uh, uh, Scandal did choose to go for the bots? By the way, yeah, uh, he'll go bots into B. And then if they don't try to go for it here, which I expect they'll probably back off after this tower, then their timing is going to be with the next big gyro item, an Aegis on the gyrocopter, and a BKB on Invoker. There's Lion's Blink Dagger now up. He's having to fly it out to himself, so they're not ready to have his initiation yet, Mag. But Lion can exit kill if possible. Ramsey's hanging around for the Ancients, and they're beating the Hawk. So there's your Beastmaster Vault, Spectral Hawk. <laughs> And a quick movement, Zeus BT in and then blinking up to give his extra bit of damage to also ensure the last hit. And 680 gold for the kill over on the gyrocopter. That's just not a good play. Uh, you can't take the enemy ancients there. You have no vision, it's just a very kind of selfish play. Um, and it's probably Ramsey's biggest flaw right now. You just, you won't see better players make that sort of error. Uh, there's no really other way to say it. He just uh, needs to work on his game sense in a lot of situations. But that's kind of what happens when you're his kind of player. He wants, he's, he's the big, he's the big guy, you know? I'd use a different euphemism, but point is, he's, just plays Dota, and he's better than you, and he's going to try and take everything from you, and a lot of times that can put you out of position against a coordinated team, and as you saw, just board in, a roar, Spectre ult, and the guy just dies, and that'll happen the entire game to any hero, regardless of the amount of farm they acquire. Well, here's your push. That tier 1 tower, starting to drop down low, just the spectral uh, illusions which are left behind, and the tower actually denied up by the gyrocopter, so Ramsey's might have given his life, but he takes away the extra gold of the tower. Which hilariously enough is actually similar to what he was worth when he died. But you, you've still got this Aegis Immortal on the back of Scandal, this thing only lasts for another 20 seconds however. Actually maybe even less, there may even be 15 seconds. So Team Empire now. Like there's no tier two tower to push the bottom lane. Like they've still removed all out of towers from Vega. But these are pushing. It's like okay, afterlife, afterlife. Oh, that chronosphere won't be useful. But the tornado is well off target as well. Mag just walked around the edge of the chronosphere. Call snap will be there, so he'll trade his life, avoid for a beastmaster. Kind of dangerous considering Mag is still their only form of initiation because Solo just well he does actually have he does actually have that blink dagger now on the Doombringer. So maybe they do actually have a second form of initiation. 
The the key is now that they have they have two things that can set up the global. So they can blink uh, roar or they can blink doom. And in addition, Zeus has a bot and blink to set up follow up. Obviously, oh, Spectre can be global the as well. The hex no. Oof. Line hex the mud golem. He didn't hex doom. Doom was too quick on the blink, so uh, yeah, King Lara actually yeah. hexed the mud golem. Unfortunately. The, the the key to this game is going to be, like, yes, Gyro and Voker are ahead of the game, but if you compare every other hero on Vega right now, they're ahead of their counterpart, and especially in the Beastmaster vs. Void, that's only going to continue and get worse, um, and eventually Spectre will just carry the game, um, although he is in a lot of trouble up here, if they can catch him. He's moving to the trees, he's still got a TP scroll available. Oh. And half -Life just had a, a YOLO chrono. Fine, he has an AG, so not a huge investment. You miss 100% of the void ults you don't take. <laughs> the amount of versions I've heard of that of that Dendi line is unbelievable. Well, I mean, it's originally I think a Jordan quote, but I mean, we can call it Dendi's. Was it actually done by Jordan to start with? Was yeah. that like you you, you missed the either... baskets? Yeah, it was either that? him. It was either him or Gretzky. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. It might have been Gretzky too. I'm not sure, but it was one of them. I'm pretty sure. So, someone tracked down some history for us. Always good to know sources. Uh, it was so, Gretzky, I was right. Bang. It was Gretzky? Uh huh. Oh, in that case, I'll stop giving Dendy credit for it. <laughs> he always, yeah, uh, that was the first time I ever, like, I never, I collected the, the NBA cards, but I never really players too much. Uh, I remember from the Dendy hook line. <laughs> Hard to forget. Um, <laughs> but Pudge is easy to forget. Whatever happened yeah. to him? Oh, the hero is still good. My brother tries to get me to pick it for him all the time, but I'm just not about that life right now. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of things that, like, it's like, why would you pick a four Pudge that needs to hit hooks so you can just pick a four Doom that can just die and die and die and just keep eating creeps and will inevitably have more farm than said Pudge? There's, this there's is no this, good answer no to that one, which, which yeah. goes in favor for a bunch. Yeah, sure. This is this game is looking good for Vega. I think this is what they want. The game has stagnated for like the last seven, five minutes. No real action, no real change in the advantage for either side. The Aegis has faded. They're, they're just not really in any concern here, I don't think. They, wanna, they have a BKB now on the Spectre, which is very interesting to me because it, while it's interesting, it's good. But if he gets either hexed or void ulted before that goes off, it just becomes a wasted 4,000 gold. Where, say, a Radiance that builds up for a heart, a Diffusal, might actually allow him to survive. Eh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. You see this is a really weird ward, though, by um, Empire. All the way on the left side of the map. Typically, you see that against Tinkers, Batriders, Furians. But this is just, I guess, the situation that's about to happen. Oh, wow. No one... Wow. <laughs> okay. All right. Yep. Yep. That one was good protection, right? <laughs> All right, so no one, no one read him like a book. I don't know if he showed himself. That might be possible. But no one could have also just made a really big play. Uh, Spectre Mag Ult's gonna go out. Yeah, they they, won't catch they, they messed it up a little bit. Mag went for the raw and uh, actually went straight to Necrobooks after, uh, but he did it at the same time as the as the jump away. So they they missed their initiation on afterlife. <laughs> Brosh still not up. Uh, let's see. Me so also, he chose to go for the Max Devour build over the Max Infernal Blade, so he's actually moved ahead of the Void as well, and he'll continue to skyrocket in net worth, even with all of the mistakes he's made and the fact that he's bought out already. And once again, I just highly, I just disagree with everything Afterlife has done this game. He skipped Bash at really early levels, and he rushed an Aghanim Scepter, which is just... You just don't need it. If you think about it, all of the alts from Vega, uh, 90 seconds on the Zeus alt, 120 on the Spectre, uh, 75 on the Roar. There's no real difference between him having uh, 90 seconds or 60. What he's got now, and well, he will get an alt on. Well, what is Solo doing there, man? How's that happening? I, I don't know. I really don't know. And that's oh, no easy way to that. Yeah. 
he's just not having a good game. Looks somewhat tilted, but uh, we'll see. So the thing is, like this Void ulti, it will be back up soon. But if they fight before it comes up, his hero is effectively worthless. Tornado's gonna miss. Roshi's dying, but slowly. And I don't like this because Jar was taking damage in the pit. And this is. This is scary. It's Spectre already a three quarter of his life. There's the wall forward. They go on top of Scandal in Faruka! Oh, he's up, he lives seven. with 5 HP. He walks away. You got the buyback already out from Solo because obviously he loves to do that. FM with his BKB now going to wear off. Ramsey's no one's right behind that orb attack. It's going to be enough to kill him off as he drops into two thanks to the Arc Lightning. They cannot kill off FM. They look for the Sunstrike, but FM hides him the tree line. They move back over in Tomb. Well, I suppose it wasn't used yet. Now they can kill off King R. They will take the gem and Vega, the big fight going their way. They will move over to Roshan. Oh, the oh, dream is real right real now. Right if, you're now Vega, if you're Vega, you just took the greatest fight ever. So strike in the base. So oh, okay, it's still cool down. He tried. Uh, actually, where did he yeah. throw that? He threw it. He threw it at Roshan. Trying to see if Vega was still in there. <laughs> That's, that's yeah, the that's only the only downside for Vega is they couldn't slip in and take Roshan after that. Yeah. But considering yeah, they were 6,000 net worth behind at one point, and they were actually about 3.5k to 4k uh, worth of experience behind, they're now 5k uh, experience ahead, and they're about to lead the gold for the first time in the last 20 minutes. This is the problem with this dual core setup. Part of the reason you've seen, again, a lot of top teams shifting to more of a tri or even quad core setup. Because while both of these heroes, like, they're ahead of the game, both Scandal and Ramses, but they went on Scandal there, and even though they didn't kill him, they took him so low that he couldn't fight again. And that's all and they need around. to do, which I think they're about to do again. They reveal him again. Up they run. Scandal. Here goes your BK. Be the Chrono Spear oh from Afterlife. Lord. He misses everything. In fact, he's actually trapped Scandal here inside the Chrono, wasting even more of his BK. B time Magma jumps back to the back of the wall. Now you're going for your special horn. They got everything on the fingers just used on the speed. They've almost got FN dead. He'll break free, but not far enough. Far the enough. impetus yeah. damage yeah. from the Enchantress will find that pickoff. And now Beastmaster. Necro books up again. He fails on the raw time. Yeah, jump ship click just not working for him. He walks back through. His own teammate is declared. Now get the roar off from the Enchantress. They want Ramsey's pick. It's a double kill right now on the Enchantress. Gem, oh, who gives it a crap? The Enchantress is down. It's a triple kill for no one. Four heroes down for Team Empire at the moment. I'm not quite certain they have enough damage to kill off Roshan, however. This is the downside. <laughs> I'm starting to think that maybe Afterlife should just sell the eggs, because I don't know if more ultimates is really what his team is going to want out of him at this point. I think some auto attacks might be better, because that was just... That just that's just not the play, Toby. Um... Roche, I, they don't even need the Spectre, like he made a big mistake and didn't BKB before he went in and died immediately, but <laughs> did so much damage through dispersion that they just didn't care and Zeus, Doom, Scott, like they just, it just matter, like Zeus just killed everything and yep. like, I don't know, it's... the Void's just had no impact on this game thus far. It's the Chaos Factor, which is made by Vega, which I think is making this also a little bit harder for our life to know what target what to go target? on. Right now, he just seems to like the first thing he sees, his eyes just light up. It's like, oh, ball of string, cat pounce, kind of play. And Vega, Vega, Vega properly reading this. The second they want to go on somebody, like the only things which I kind of felt have been a little bit like, like also iffy consistently from Vega is Mag. Like his blink to roars, the amount of times he's attempted it but stopped halfway through his roar. I don't think it's even because Empire is stopping him, he just actually cancels it. We're talking about... Uh, Beastmaster. Um, Beastmaster? Yeah, the, the blink roar. Like, he, he blinks to roars and then instantly triggers Necrobook straight away. Like, I'm, I'm assuming he's like, he's shift-clicking this stuff. It's possible. I don't think so. I, I, I don't know if you could really play Beastmaster with, um, shift-clicking, but... He, um... It's interesting because it was another. It's another big difference between Han and Dota, and part of the reason tread swapping and even summoning units from a Necro book can be a little weird because it it counts as like an action and or a frame beak. So if you tread swap like your hero, I don't know how to explain it, but it takes a frame to to use items. So normally you want to roar first, but at the same time, if you die without getting your Necro book off and they get like a text off, it can be really they bad. Got, yeah, they got Nimbus Grim from Mag that yeah, instantly see Ramsey. Necro books, Dead. Mystic Flare, and say goodbye to your Gyrocopter for 72, no. 72 seconds. And Evan actually BK beat him, went in after Afterlife. <laughs> 
That was a little too deep there, but it won't really matter. With no Gyrocopter on the field, and Scandal already half-life, he's forced back to regenerate. The only thing which is helping him out is the fact that Vega do not have their creep wave with them just yet. So we're slowing the attack slowing up the into the high ground of Empire, but now they arrive. And they saw the MKB only too. connected on, on the King R. They still the oh, MKB, so they should know he doesn't have buyback, and so those dead. Well, luckily they gave Aegis the Immortal to the guy that was continuously dying. And Solo jumps in, instant doom on the Faceless Void, again, deleted from the team fight. The Faceless Void will buy back. The Ice Wall's up from Scandal, but Vega backing out. They got Fortification out, they got buyback out from the Faceless Void, and the Gyro is still there for another 16 seconds. You just, you can't play a Void in this kind of game, in this role on your team, and not have a Blink Dagger. Like, he's just... He can't get good off the top because he just doesn't have the positioning in front of K, Zeus just, yeah. So you just don't bad. give no one Zeus, man. This guy loves this hero. I, I think that Vega's at their best when they're running like a tricore with Beastmaster or Furion for Mag, Zeus or Invoker for, for uh, no one, and then their um, FN on like just a Spectre or a Slark. Uh, it's just so annoying to deal with and cause so much chaos and... Just again, just such high damage output from that Zeus hero, as demonstrated once again. It's it's, it's also crazy now that no one like, he's gonna have two heroes which you want to ban out in the first two in the drafting phase. And you go up against the yeah. Baker, what are you gonna do? I take out Zeus and Invoker in the first two. Mm. Yeah, and then uh, if you take those out, then you can just like play the OD. And man, <laughs> there's no hero I think more hated right now in all of Dota because. Eh. Invoker, you know, it's it's maybe a little cheesy, whatever, but at least you feel like he's beating you. But this this whole imprison himself and to blink out and he can do that through anything that's going on is, is really, really frustrating oh. to deal with. We're gonna throw a few on that one. Now the blink, raw. Ramsey's gets his BKB off as well as an even call down, but well, it doesn't really stop him. Vega just keep moving forward. Solo, Solo. Scandal's just trying to kill him off, but it looks like Solo's actually reached the point now where he won't die. Two heroes down for Team Empire, three heroes down, all three of them the cause as well. Oh. And look at no uh, one, at he's no hunting. hunting. He is hunting so hard with oh, a body bomb. He's got him! He's got him. He actually reaches that far. Yeah. Man, Four this heroes is the, lost. This is the problem with Empire's lineup. Like they had a timing and I just they just didn't seem to be aware of it. And at this point, like what do you do? You know? You can't look at the HP of Spectre and Zeus, Beastmaster, Doom. Like the only squishy hero is Skyrath. Everyone else is uh, no one? at least like a billion health. Oh, they got the Doom on Scandal. This actually just guarantees them a mid with the Veil of Discord, plus the Seal Enchant, which just disintegrates. Chill by back. They, do they actually go for the GG push here? Because he actually is the only option they've got with the T2 tower still up. It's either backup or GG push. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be backup. Yep, They'll make their way through the bottom lane. They look at the tier 2, they'll retreat, buy all their items, make another fight soon. But there's no reason to immediately team fight after you get all those big wins. Like, just look at the amount of gold saved on all their heroes. Vector is finishing a heart. Doom has 3k, a recipe in the base. Deuce has nearly 6k. I mean, they're they very, very wealthy right now in Vegas. I have about a 20k net worth advantage. The experience is 25,000 in favor of Vega. <laughs> and refresher, refresher orb yeah. Zeus. Like, if he if he gets bail on anybody, uh, especially the Enchantress and the Lion, they're dead. Just simply <laughs> deleted. In fact, is the Lion actually deleted anyway, even without Veil? Um. 940 mm, HP to get through on him. Uh, they go. Nah, he, he won't die. Mid lane, as uh, no one's gonna bounce around. Half life's coming in for the Chronosphere. No one. Hex. Finger. Yeah. They kill him off. Zeus still has money for buyback after buying Refresher Orb, but still, it's a good kill. Good kill. <laughs> he just gets cocky once again. There's really no reason for him to be there. He's gonna buy back though, because once again, Mag's in there. Oh, boy, man, that boy the dead. jump back. And with that ultimate of Thunder God's <laughs> Wrath, you can take it by the line in the face of Void. The intent will also go down here to FN. There's your refresher. GG is the call. No one's dead yeah, with a little consequence when FN kicks in for an ultra kill. And Vega will 2 0 advance, and advance themselves through into the semi finals. This is the issue with this dual collab. Like, if you remember 
back in the day, EG would always do like their DP Fury thing with an Abaddon. Saw some vods of that yesterday. Back at MDL, Ehome would do like an LC with a Lone Druid, maybe a Slark to boot. Um, if you don't have any saves and you run strategy with in which two heroes are providing all of your damage, the game plan for Vega is just dry. You initiate on one of them, 